Before the break, our candidate spoke about education and poverty alleviation, but now I want to hear from our candidate what are her plans for sports because I know that the young men in the communities love to play their football and yes. love to play their basketball oh, and, yes. the, and the ladies their netball. So, what are some of the plans that they have for sports, Ashley? Well, sports really is very important because it's a part, it develops the entire person. And I think that, especially in the inner city, we have Mr. Merrick. We have not been putting enough emphasis on the development of the person as a whole inside. And sports teaches discipline. You have a great time, it's a great stress reliever, and it can intervene with regard to particular things within the constituency that we do not like that happen daily, such as crime. It is a great peace management initiative. Mm -hmm. So we I will continue to fund football clubs I'll continue to, f to form groups. And when I say I, I mean the leadership of the People's National Party as government. Um, and we, we need to make better use of our facilities. We have Jarrett Park within the constituency. A lot more could be done at Jarrett Park. So I look forward to it. I look forward to working with our young people. I look forward to working with the SDC in a very serious way to provide this new avenue and this outlet on a consistent basis for all of the young constituents and even the older ones who might like a little, I don't know, a little bingo, that's a sport, I guess, a little chess. So yes, chess. <laughs> we need to focus on that. Yes, um, about St. James Central is central to, to St. James. Yes. How can St. James Central be used as an instrument to impact the other constituencies around? Definitely, St. James Central is in the heart of St. James. We're downtown, we're the heartbeat of the city. We are the city. <laughs> so I think that our greatest draw right now internationally is tourism, especially for the Americans. I think we're number nine internationally as a tourist destination. So we need tourism to be felt on our, in a real way on the ground. One way that we can do that is by transforming Dump Up Beach and making it a public beach. I think this can be done through the Tourism Enhancement Fund. It could be a beach park akin to Emancipation Park with a commercial reggae twist. So this now would provide somewhere for the, what I call them, $10 tourists <laughs> to, to come off of the ship, because a lot of them stay on the ships, mm -hmm. and come out and mingle with the people in a safe environment. So it would provide some new traffic for the craft markets. It would also provide some traffic in the town. We have the art center. It is beautiful, the museum. So we really need to now create a wholesome and safe tourist environment, and it can only begin once the infrastructure is in place. The Fisherman's Beach should be akin to Oyston's in Barbados. What we need there is a public, through the Ministry of Tourism and TEF, private, through local investors, and cooperative, through the cooperative, Fisherman's Cooperative Partnership to ensure that we have over 500, maybe over a thousand tourists on a weekly basis visiting that property. It's a beautiful property where the infrastructure and a good strong management system must be put in place. My vision is for our fishermen, not just the selfish, but to be shareholders in a fishing business. All right, Ashley. So for the young lady and the young man, that is listening right now in the deep inner city community of Montego Bay and has heard you know politicians come before and made promises how would you in a few sentences just encourage that young person to believe that this is the difference and this is the change this is the difference and this is a change because I think that I am living proof with regard to what can come out of St. James Central and what can come out of the inner city one generation ago, my entire family lived in St. James Central. My mother was born on North Street. My family comes from Paradise Row. In one generation, through education alone, an opportunity provided by Norman Washington Manley to get a scholarship to go to high school for the first time in our entire family, opened a door for her to see the wider world and become an attorney at law through hard work. So I would like to partner with you, young people. I would like to hold your hand. I would like to educate, empower, and uplift through the creation of opportunities. 
and we must work together to do it. A politician is not a savior. A politician cannot give you everything that you want. But if we work together and implement the politics of partnership and love and peace, we will all be prosperous because we can only prosper in a peaceful and loving environment. We need to hold each other's hands. All right, thank you so much. All right, now let us hear from our viewers on Facebook because prior to this interview, we made a post asking individuals to ask our candidates questions. So Andre from Facebook is asking you, if you have made any move to partner with the Chamber of Commerce to help university students amass some work experience to offset the deficit that usually prevents them from being employed due to the lack of experience or even apprenticeship for high school students. I think that's a great idea. I haven't done that yet. I am not MP yet. <laughs> but as soon as I'm MP in the next two weeks, I will definitely partner with the Chamber of Commerce. I'll definitely call Miss Gloria Henry and we'll work on a program with regard to apprenticeship. I'd also like to thank the private sector for believing in me as a young woman because they've really stepped up to the plate. And some days I don't know how I'm going to make it through financially. So there are a couple of companies out there, quite a few. I'd like to thank you all for your support. <laughs> all right, on Twitter, one of our one of one of our um one of our persons asks: In the last election, the People's National Party won the seat by only ninety-eight votes, oh, yeah. which makes it very marginal. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that you will win this seat by a landslide, or do you think <laughs> that it will remain marginal from your groundwork? Uh, from my groundwork, we're looking at over five hundred <laughs> votes. Um, the PMP is a very, we're a very technical and strategic <laughs> party when it comes to our campaign style and strategy. So we have done our canvases to a T. We have polled the seat several and many times. So we are confident of victory and we work very hard. Elections are won on the day and nothing, nothing can beat the organization of the People's National Party and the dedication of its workers and its base on the day. All right, so we're coming to an exciting end on One Loves TV's election watch, but we want to ask Ashley one controversial question, sure. then we'll get into her hope to St. James Central. Ashley, what are your thoughts about the opposition leader removing and suggesting that there will be no income tax for persons earning below 1.5 million Jamaican dollars? Well, you know, that sounds great, but you know, not, 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 not everything good to talk. It is a pipeline dream. I am disappointed that the opposition leader could feel as if he could trick the Jamaican electorate. But by putting, proffering such a suggestion, it is unworkable. It is the same way that the Jamaican Labour Party removed user fees from the hospital. The user fee must come back on because we must be able to provide top tier health care to our people. Now, I would like the opposition leader to tell me, as a young person who, I don't know if I make, well, do I make $1.5 million, just about, how he would be making up that shortfall and how it would impact me as a PAYE taxpayer. Because those persons would be paying tax. Would now the PAYE taxpayer, like myself, and most young people who make maybe $1.6 million, have a heavier tax burden. I want to know, Andrew. We all want to know. All right. So in maybe about a minute, market to our viewers why we should vote for you on the 25th of February. Okay, I am a formidable candidate on the 25th of February for the People's National Party in St. James Central because I have the spiritual upbringing, the intellectual acumen, the educational training, the dedication and commitment to serve. I come from my constituency. I have strong roots there. And I am ready to move St. James Central and Montego Bay forward in the most positive way. I believe in a politics of partnership and love and participation, accountability and responsibility. Vote for Ashley Ann Foster. Vote early. Put your X beside the head. All right, there you have it. Thank you so much, Thank Ashley Foster, right. for <laughs> accepting our invitation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley Foster, the candidate for the People's National Party for St. James Central. I'm your host, and I'll see you again. Take care. <laughs>